national and international climate policy uh, around adaptation, mitigation, loss and damage, etc. Um, in the context of this uh, workshop, I was one of the coordinating lead authors on the Atlas in the Working Group 1 report. Myself and, and Alex, we uh, led the handshake process between Working Group 1 and Working Group 2, where we, um, which was part of the development of the CID framework, which um, Alex introduced earlier. Um, and in the context of this workshop here, um, I'm going to basically introduce a little bit more detail about what we are doing in um, what, what we've been calling the yellow sessions. You saw that um, um, uh, agenda um, which uh, Anna put up earlier looking at the different sessions we're doing. And so this is, this is the session where uh, what, we're, what we're really keen to do is to learn from you guys. Hopefully there'll be a whole lot of stuff that we'll be talking about this week which will be useful for you and that you'll be able to learn as well, but we're really keen uh, to learn from the experiences that, um, the, the, um, that you've had and how that can um, feed into um, understanding what the research and the assessment priorities are. And so we're here to discuss uh, about the application, the development and the application of regional climate information in the context of risk assessment and, and adaptation. Um, and we've obviously had experience in that, but we know that you've had experience in that also. We would be interested to understand your perspectives uh, on that, and so we can try to develop a joint perspective coming out of this workshop, which then may, we hope, will be useful in the future in terms of um, essentially closing the gap that Anna was, was talking about earlier. If you remember in one of the points that Anna was making, that their assessment of the national adaptation plans that were happening around, around Europe is that they're like 10 plus years um, uh, in the past. So they're using like AR4 science. And that uh, in the AR6, um, through our assessment of the literature um, that was out there, we could see that there is, uh, there is a significantly better way of doing that. What we really need to do is to, is to close that gap between what the science really knows and what's there at the cutting edge of the science and what is actually being used in terms of, in terms of the, the development of adaptation plans and the implementation of, those, um, of those, those adaptation plans. So we're here to close that gap, okay? That's one of our, um, that's one of the things that we should be, think we, we should be focusing on. So, um, okay, uh, so yeah, so basically the, the goal of this, of these yellow sessions, and um, we're starting this, um, this afternoon, is to develop a community perspective um, on the regional research and assessment priorities. Um, so as I was just introducing, we're, we're looking to gather ideas um, from your experiences, from your perspectives, um, on what you already have in terms of useful and actionable regional information, what you actually need in terms of that as well. I mean, what, what's missing? What, what is it that you can't do? What is the research that needs to happen in order um, to um, provide um, more, more, um, more robust information, information that is more directly applicable in an adaptation or a risk assessment context. So we um, have designed these series of sessions throughout the week to encourage this exchange of views and ideas of information. Um, there, isn't, there, there is no such thing as a bad idea. There is no such thing as a stupid question, okay? Uh, we want to hear what it is that you're thinking, what it is that you um, think that we, that, that we really need. So be brave, be creative, be confident, be collaborative. We're, we're, we're all here as, you know, we're, we're all here as equals. We all come with our own expertise, and we're here to share, and we're here to integrate all of that really sort of rich knowledge that we all have to come up with something that is, um, that's really useful. Um, you will, you will be, be aware that we sent out a couple of weeks ago a um, background survey, which um, um, thank you very much for those of you that have, uh, um, have completed that. That still is there available online. We'd like you to, if some of those, some of you who haven't done that, if you have the time whilst we're here to um, complete that survey, that would be great. Um, and that is, uh, as, um, the inputs from that have, uh, have, have allowed us to think about how we could structure 
um, the sessions that we are going to be um, running in the, in the next few days. Um, and the first one is the one that's happening this afternoon, um, and this is, a, this is going to be a, a world cafe where we all um, collect together and, and um, discuss a, a series of different themes um, in terms of, of information, either from a regional perspective, a sector perspective, or what's relevant more broadly or more globally in terms of adaptation uh, and loss and damage. But I won't say any more about that because I'll hand over to Elvira, who's going to introduce um, that, that part of the... Um, of the World Cafe session. Okay, okay. Sarah's going to come in first. As you can see, we are highly organised. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can do the... Hello, Is this okay? Can people hear me? Yeah? Okay. So this is just a quick overview of when the, the sessions will t take place, but you have that online, so you can look that up if you need it. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you about before we break in, well, well, then we'll introduce the World Cafe and explain how you guys are going to interact. Um, but before that, I wanted to give a quick overview of the survey that we sent out and some of the responses that have come back already, because I thought you'd maybe find it interesting to see what you and your fellow colleagues have been, um, have been uh, giving us information on and what your views are. Um, so a little bit of background. So this is all the people who were registered for the workshop. So we have a roughly around 70 participants, both in person and online. Um, and then you can see in the, the bottom right is the regional sort of breakdown. So you've like majority from Asia. I mean, Asia is obviously a massive continent anyway. Um, and then we've got um, big sections from uh, Africa, Europe, and Latin America, smaller from the Oceania region and, and North America. Um, about 50% of us are early career. Oh, I didn't touch anything. <laughs> About 50% of us are early career, 38% mid, and 11% senior. Um, and we've got roughly 50-50 um, male, female, a little bit less on the female. Um, and so that's just in context of who is, is here, both in person and online. And then now looking at the survey. OK, so at the moment, we've had 34 responses, so roughly half. If you haven't taken the survey, please do. <laughs> it would be really great um, to build on this data set. So you've got the QR code that you can scan literally now, and um, there's the link there when you get the slides later on. I can also, um, for the people online, I'll put this link in the chat later on so you guys can um, access it there. Um, it would be really nice to share all the responses um, like a summary of all the responses that we get by the end of the week, uh, share it all with you guys. So it'd be nice to get the number to be higher than 34. Um, in terms of what responses we've got at the moment, um, you can see the list of uh, countries uh, on, the, on the right here, and then what stage of the career they're in. Um, and so we're, we've got a quite a good representation. Obviously, we need more responses from everywhere, but particularly Oceania and the South American regions, a little bit less, a little bit underrepresented. Um, so, you know, if you haven't responded, please do. <laughs> um, and then what best describes the institute slash organization that you work for? I guess you maybe got a feel for this already when we were doing the introductions, but the majority of us are uh, either university or research institute based, but we, you know, that's not everyone. So we've got people from government, central regional government, international organizations, private companies, um, and so I would challenge you, like, throughout this week to try and talk to at least one other person outside of your, your, your classification. You know, try and mix with people. Don't just stick to, um, if you're from a research institution, don't just talk to people from a research, research institution. I think try and break up and talk to as many different diverse people as you, as you can over the week, because I think you can really benefit from the diversity of experiences that, you're, that you've got in this room and, and online together. And I want the Delft people definitely to break up and <laughs> not always be sitting next to each other <laughs> in, the, in the meeting. Okay. 
Um, so I asked if you used um, model data, observational data, or both. The vast majority of you say you actually use a combination of both, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, and then there's slightly more um, models over observations in terms of the minority that's left. I asked, uh, for your work that you do, um, is there like valuable, crucial data that's missing? So it makes it really hard or uh, unable for you to, to, to do your work. And I, I found this sort of normal distribution very interesting because I imagine there's quite a few people that are like, well, you know, I've got the data that I need. I mean, it's not ideal, but I can, I can do my research. I can do my PhD. Um, but then you've got like the middle half being like, oh, but it would be really great if I could actually have this, this, and this. And like my, my research or my work would be so much better if I had that. And then you've got like the, the right-hand side, which is like, yeah, I'm really struggling, actually. I need this information. And it would be so much better if I had this information. So I really thought this, this normal distribution maybe looks a bit boring, but actually there's a lot to unpick, uh, what well, I assume to unpick from that, from that distribution. And then we also asked, um, what resolution of your data, is it satisfactory? Are you able to, uh, to, 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 to do, your, do your work, do your research? I found this very interesting because we had spatial resolution, is that satisfactory? And temporal resolution, satisfactory. And it was very different. I, was, I, I don't know, I was like maybe a bit naive here. But yeah, m many more of you said that no, it's not, um, the spatial resolution is just not, not satisfactory for what I really want to do in my work and my research. And then, you know, maybe quite obviously when we asked, well, are there any variables, metrics, you know, the data that you'd really want to use but you can't, you know, maybe very, quite obviously over 50% of you said, yes, there are, there's, there's, there's more data I want to have a, have a play with. So we then asked, like, is there, what's the reason for why you can't use that data? Um, is it that it doesn't exist? Is it that you're having data access issues, it's not open access, or it's behind paywalls, or um, it's not, you know, it's just not open to the public or, or institutions? Um, is it the fact the spatial resolution is not good enough? Is it that it's tempor the temporal resolution is not good enough? And we have it roughly equal, but a little bit more on the, just as the spatial resolution is not there for what you need, and that reflects the earlier question um, and responses uh, as well. We then asked, um, you know, if, if yes, which variables would you be interested in? And so I, I tried to, this is obviously just a, a subset of the, the responses, um, but I tried to uh, group them into, if you said they didn't exist, well, here's what I, you know, as a person, as a respondent, I can't find, I can't find data on this. The ones that are not open access, you've got, uh, there's, a, there's a mistake here, sorry, there's um, soil moisture is put in twice, ignore the orange one, I just mislabeled it, so sorry about that. Um, the ones that you couldn't find on um, spatial resolution, uh, several people said precipitation, I just listed it there once. And then temporal resolution, we had long-term data sets um, and these kinds of issues. So um, for those of you that haven't um, done the survey yet, I'd really encourage you to, to get down to this point and start like filling in this information. It's really useful and valuable for us. You can get a, we can, get, we can offer prize. Oh, I'm not sure I can commit to this. <laughs> but, um, and then to this, for those that have seen the survey already, we had a sort of bottom third of, sec, of questions which were actually related specifically to the IPCC. Um, I'm not going to show you the overview of the responses to that because uh, we, don't, we don't really have enough time. But I did ask, you know, what type of research gaps with respect to your research do you, do you think there are and what would be you know, valuable for the IPCC? And so... I think you know, this is mirroring very much the, the expertise in the room. And when we were doing our introductions, you're seeing um, these kinds of uh, themes emerging in terms of research gaps and what would really help produce more actionable information to help you know, decision makers. Um, so we had extremes in agricultural research, regional sea level and coastal issues, precipitation um, and clouds and the feedback associated with those. Uh, there was cross-sectional issues like climate change and health, climate change and development, climate change and conflict. Um, yeah, much more integrating and developing risk into frameworks and more about methods as well, like um, more fine resolution, long-term observations, um, yeah, better model understanding, reducing uncertainty. Um, and so that was a real whistle-stop tour of what so far we've had from, from you guys. Um, and hopefully we'll, do, we'll be able to build on that even more by the end of the week. But I thought this also would be helpful now that we're going to go into sort of smaller group discussions for you to understand like the, the wider group kind of viewpoint um, when you start now focusing on to specific topics that you'll discuss about. 
And now I'm going to hand over to Elvira to introduce the World Cafe. Thank you. So I think you've been hearing from us quite a lot this morning. So now it's your turn to, to take to the floor a bit more. So we're going to have a, a World Cafe for the rest of the afternoon. So actually, if, if you know what a World Cafe is and you've participated in one before, can you just put your hand up just so I can get an idea? So not many of you. OK. So, so basically, a World Cafe, it's, it's a structured conversational process for knowledge sharing. So what we're going to do is we're going to break you into smaller groups, and we're going to have three sessions. So I've put the agenda here with the... I'm not quite sure how we're sticking to the timings, but um, we, we essentially we're going to have... Oops, I should go on this one. Yeah. We're going to have three, three half-hour sessions of the World Cafe. Um, it, the idea of this is it will provide you with a, an informal environment. You'll be in smaller groups, so, so please feel, feel brave about speaking up and sharing your ideas. It will be less intimidating because you'll be there with your peers. And the, the ideas are gathered by groups, so as each group moves to a table, the ideas from the previous group will be there, and you can add to them, subtract to them, build on them. So... So what we have is we have essentially five tables here. We've got three tables focused on specific regions, so Africa, Asia, Central and South America and small islands, and then two cross-cutting tables, one on adaptation and one around broader concepts, including loss and damage. Um, each of these tables will have a set of questions, and we want you to visit three tables throughout the afternoon. So, so you can visit three regional tables, or you can go to two regional and cross-cutting, etc. So, so it's really up to you to visit, to visit those tables, self-select. Each table will also have a host. And that host is there to, to, um, to assist the process, but also they'll do a handover as a new group comes in. They'll, they'll do the handover and explain the thoughts of the previous group to you. You will find post-it notes. There'll be paper. So if you know when you have an idea, write it down, put it on the table. I think we've got whiteboards as well, so you can put it on the whiteboards. And as the ideas build up, you can start to look for commonalities. Maybe you can group them. You can rearrange what the previous um, uh, group had there. So the conversations are progressive. You're building on these subsequent sessions. I was going to say there'll also be a virtual table that Sarah will be running for the people online. You'll stay on the Zoom and you will sort of virtually uh, switch between three sessions. Um, so the questions for the regional tables. Oops, sorry, I haven't updated the slides, but just to say that... that um, Isidine will be hosting the Africa table. Um, but yeah, stand, stand up. <laughs> there you go. I'll be hosting the Asia table. And Erica will be hosting the Central, South America and Small Islands table. And we, we have three questions we'd last ask you to consider around research priorities regarding climate change, impacts, risks and adaptation. Sorry, online people. Just to repeat that, you know, the Africa table is not restricted to people only from Africa, right? It's it's like um, it's it's open to, to everyone. It's just if you have an interest, you know, it's not it's not exclusive. Sorry, thanks. It's okay. <laughs> no. So um, so we got three questions for you around research priorities, sort of thinking about what the climatic and other metrics are and what, what, how information could be shared across the region. Um, and then for the two cross-cutting um, tables, we've got the first ones about planning and implementation of adaptation. So what are the priorities for research? 
to, to inform equitable adaptation planning and implementation across sectors. And then the third one um, is focused on um, addressing um, loss and damage and ways to, to consider equity. So really sort of pushing you to try and, and think um, outside your, your own research. And as Sarah's just said that, you know, there are five tables, please visit three of them in any order um, and any of those, those three tables. So it's, it's com completely up to you. And yeah, virtual participants will stay online. So that's it. And we are going to move down to the up, up down to where we had lunch, up. Which floor are we on? <laughs> We're going to move up one floor to where we had lunch. We'll make use of the tables there. Just give us a couple of, of minutes to, to gather the um, materials together. And the, the hosts will have a nice big sign to hold up. So, so you can go. And we will, we, will, we will do the first session. Have I was going to say tea break, but it's coffee break as we're in Italy. And then we'll do the next two sessions. <laughs> And for the online one, we are going to organize some breakout group online. So we, you will get the, okay. Sarah will explain to you directly from, from here, from this room. Could I ask the online people to sign up in the chat? Uh, who is willing to participate to this um, World Cafe format? Uh, um, interaction, just put a yes online if you're interested to participate. 